Welcome to Coffee with Viking. I am Mike. Cheers. And today I had something that has been weighing on my heart that is actually something that is dying in today's world. And that is being content. That is contentment. And I want to know is anyone out there content with what they have in this world, with where they're at, with what God has done for them? And I look at the world and I see that there's all the, it's a fast paced world and there's all this new technology that seems to get upgrades every six months to a year. And, and I've known people to actually get phones get iPhones or the Samsung Galaxies or things like that and within a year they're not happy with the one they got because a new one came out and they just start focusing their minds on oh I need to get that phone it's an upgrade it's better than the one I got and, and I keep telling myself it's a phone it serves its purpose of texting calling and getting you on the internet and it's the same with cars, it's the same with clothes. I've seen people buy clothes, wear them one time, and then let them sit and collect dust in a closet. And honestly, I just don't get it. It's If it's still good, if it still fits, use it, you know? But it's part of the uncontentment in the world. And I also look at other things that hit the news and stuff like countries where people are counting their blessings when they get clean water to drink when they get food to eat but yet in this country we and in I'm sure other countries there are those who complain when they don't get the latest upgrades and it actually saddens and annoys me and frustrates me that there's a lot of people out there that are just focused on the next big thing and not, you know, being content with what they have and looking at the big picture, which is those who don't have. You know, count your blessings, be thankful for what, for what God has given you. And it's in First Timothy six, six through ten, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. I'm going to repeat this this one right here. I'm going to repeat verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So when we focus on the things of this world, things that are just temporal, that becomes our God, and that is separating us from God and from the missions God has given us which is to help and love one another. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And I used to fall into this before I wound up homeless and wound up content with living a minimalistic lifestyle. And I'm not saying having possessions is a bad thing, because it's not. It's when it's your only focus, and when you're not content, and you focus on the next big thing without looking at others. When that becomes your God, when that overtakes your mind, that's when it becomes an issue. For the love of money is the root of all evil, 
which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And it says here the love of money. That is when it becomes the thing that overtakes your mind. Now money itself, not a sin. It's actually a handy tool that we need in life to help us get what we need. We live in a world where people are more focused on, I want this, I want that, I need this, I need that, even if they don't need it. I used to be that way too. And I'm not going to judge anyone like that, but I will call it out and say that we need to fix this. We need to gain contentment. We need to spread it through this world because being content will lead to a happier, more joyous life, and it will lead us closer to God, to Christ, our Lord and Savior. And in Philippians 4, 12, it says, I know both how to be abased, and I know how to be abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. We need to focus on the needs of others as well as our own, but we need to put others. And if it leads to us in a temporary suffering to help another person, that is of Christ. That is what we are called to do is to put others above ourselves. So I have this belief that if you see someone on the streets that is hungry and you're heading out to get that next big thing, it would be best to put that on hold for Christ and to take that person that is in need of food and help them. God has called us to not only serve him, but to help each other. But the world has gone so dark and broken that we have lost being content with the things we need. And we confuse that with wants, with desires. And the thing is, God will provide what we need. In Hebrews 13.5, it tells us, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So, even if you do not have the means to get what you need, trust in him. It's like I was saying yesterday about god -pidence. Put it all in him. And in that god -pidence, he will provide. But we need, we need a heart transplant. And I see it in the Christian faith too, not everybody, but there are some in the Christian faith that are, don't live in contentment, that actually are chasing after the next big thing and not putting all their hope, trust, and faith in Christ that he will provide for them. And in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and 10, it tells us, And he, being Jesus, said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong, then am I strong. And the lust for the next big thing, that is a weakness. 
is up here. It is it falls under the category of greed and also pride because you want to show off that next big thing. I mean, it's human nature. And this here is telling us that let go of that human nature, give everything to Christ. And in our weakness, he will make us strong. He will show us the paths we need to take. Trust in him. Even in the persecution of the world, don't rely on what other people think of you. Rely on what God is doing for you. Rely on the thought that is this choice I made pleasing him. John 13 and 14 tells us this. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, which is the water of eternal life, him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the water he's referring to is the Holy Spirit. It is eternal life. It is our name in the book of life. So that on the day of judgment, we get into the kingdom of heaven through our faith, our faith in him, not in what this world can offer, but in what he is offering. And this is why he wants us to be content because he is our provider and he, is make, he will make sure if you put your faith in him that you will be taken care of not only in this life, but in the next. Matthew 5, 6 tells us, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now when we hunger after the thirst and the righteousness, that won't take away all that we see in this world that takes over our eyes. Satan is a sneaky being that will make us lust after the things we do not need. He will even convince us that we need them and then to brag about them because we care what other people, how other people perceive us, what they think of us. But when we care more about pleasing God and not the world, then we hunger after thirst and righteousness and we gain in wisdom, in God's wisdom. And that is where we start to gain our salvation through Jesus Christ and get filled with that Holy Spirit. So the question I have for you is, are you content with what God has given you? Or are you still focused more on the worldly gain than on Christ? Because anything we put in front of God becomes a God to us in our hearts. And I know in this world it is hard to take our focus off of the next big thing, off of the next technology, off of the next brand of clothing that comes off, that comes off the line. I know it's hard not to look at that and start thinking, Man, that would be nice to have. And those are not sinful thoughts. It only becomes sin when we put it before God. So, are you one of those that is content with having very little, if that's where you wind up at? Or are you one of those who will lust after the next big thing? I love you all. Stay blessed. Stay caffeinated. Put your trust in the Lord. Be content with him because he will keep you full. He will take care of you in your times of need. He will lead you through every storm. Just humble yourself to him and be content. Much love. God loves you 
and he is there for you.